Nice sunny Saturday guys. Today we're going to grab a detector and we're going to head out and we're going to try to find some old coins somewhere downtown. Maybe I'll even throw the Equinox in the truck. You guys know I've been using the Legend all summer and it's just the newer machine. I honestly believe that Nocta copied everything about the Equinox. These machines are just fantastic. They did do improvements. They released a lot of firmware updates. So the Legend is more uh, like an 800 on steroids. So this 600 doesn't have all the bells and whistles. But I, when I say that Nocta copied everything about my lab, I mean everything. Check this out. Couldn't even pick new colors for their hat. For shame, Nocta. For shame. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. You know what? Screw it, guys. We're just gonna stick to the legend today because I've been using it all summer. I'm trying to get the hours in on it. It's a great machine. Um, I don't need any more than that. I've, I've actually been wanting to buy a new machine. I actually wanted to spend $2,000 on a new Mine Lab machine and buy the Manticore. And I've been watching videos like crazy. Okay, there's two machines that are top tier, supposedly, and that is the Deus 2 and the Manticore. And guys, no matter how much I want, no matter how much I'm lusting after this new machine, the truth is that the legend will do everything those machines will do. And it was a fraction of the cost, a third of the cost. Now, the reason I was thinking of upgrading is for the visual ID on the screen. You know, when you lock in on a coin or whatever junk target, in my case, you get that number between 0 and 100. Well, the legend only goes 0 to 60. I don't like that. Is it worth buying a new machine just to, to fix the visual ID? No. Maybe if the visual ID was way more accurate, I would consider it. But all of the videos that I'm watching, both the Deus and the Manicore, the visual ID jumps around the exact same as the legend. Any item that you have in the ground can be between, an example, a coin could go between 47 and 40. It'll ring all of those numbers up. It, most of the time it doesn't hit on a single number. So until they get something that can 100% give you a solid number, you know, and you know right away, well, this is a penny, this is a nickel. It, it never is the case. I mean, within a range, guys. I know nickels don't ring up like pennies. That's not my point. My point is, for $2,000, if you don't have a bang-on ID, if you can't draw me a picture of what's in the ground, I'm not buying it at this point. We're going to stick with the legend for at least until next spring. <laughs> we'll see if they've come out with something better by then. For today, let's grab the legend and let's go. Don't take my word for it, guys. I am not sponsored by any detecting company. If you go online to iratemetaldetectors.com, which is Merrill, he also runs the YouTube channel NYC Detector, um, knows his stuff, guys. He's been doing it for many years. See the treasures that this guy has pulled. He has rated on his site, number one, the legend, which is above the Manicore and the Deus 2. And both of those are, you know, $2,400 Canadian machines, right? Um, I got my Legend with the Pro Pack, came with a pinpointer, a digger, a couple of pouches, two hats, um, anything and everything you need to get started was $900, guys. I paid more than that for the Equinox alone without a 6-inch coil. The 6-inch coil for the Equinox cost me $350, so for value, you cannot beat the Nocta Legend, okay? And then the fact that it's doing 95% of what these other machines are doing... As of right now, 2023, that's the machine to get for the higher end guys. If you want to start out with a simpler machine, I'd still, I'd probably say one of the simplexes. They came out with a couple of new ones. Um, you know, just good machines and cheap. I've got a fair amount of green space here. I have tried over uh, this end of the park and did find 1940s pennies and stuff before. So I thought, eh, we'll start here and just see what we can find. There is the potential for old stuff. This park is incredibly clean, except the first three holes I've dug, oh, I've dug three big chunks of iron like that, very deep, like 16 inches, ringing up almost like coins. So, <laughs> ringing up like a coin, but not a coin. Solid 25, but 
not old, 1994 Canada nickel. Nope, that isn't it. Well, first penny. I don't believe that that's an old one. Mm, 1981. What is that? I don't know. It's got a plastic sheath on it. No idea. Hey, there we go. Finally something interesting. Oh no, don't fall apart. <laughs> yeah, she's falling apart. What was it? It's a dinky car. Was it just a Humvee? Let me uh, brush that off. There's the bottom side and the tires. We just had a underbody failure right there, 100%. <laughs> so even after brushing it off, I'm still confused uh, as to what it's supposed to be. It had tires, so it's not a train. Um, but it's got a very weird shape. Play art. And then the bottom plate there says tire tender on it. Made in Hong Kong, but there's no date. So that's what's left of the bottom. Uh, it would be cooler if there was a date, but hey, still, cool find. You guys can see fall is upon us here behind me. All the leaves are turning beautiful red and orange. That little dinky car there, if I had to put a date on it, guys, I would say early 80s. Persistence pays off. We've got something here. I think is actually interesting guys. Maybe an old military button I just flipped it out of the ground Let's take a look together Look at this Definitely an old button Let me brush this off Wowza guys, this is old Look at the back. It's a drilled shank. That's old. That's a solid piece that is drilled. Guys, that's like 1800s if I'm not mistaken. And uh, this design on here, I, I'm not sure. Also to note guys, on that last find, the button there, I switched the machine over to single frequency, 15 kilohertz. No doubt we would have found it in multi as well, but I thought I'm going to go old school for a little while in the park here, just like the old macro cruiser that I had, 15 kilohertz, and see what we can find. And that was the first target, and that was ringing up a solid 40, so it's definitely made out of a brass alloy of some kind. That button is old. Also, I guess we should note, guys, my complaint about the cruiser was that it was always too noisy, too chirpy, too hot. We would put it in four-tone mode, which I don't have that as an option on this machine, but I've got to tell you, the single frequencies are quiet as a mouse. They have ironed out any issues that I had with that cruiser. This thing, you just can't beat the legend. I love it. And right beside the button, we've got this interesting piece here. That is old as well. That almost, well, I don't know. The real money today would have been in worms. I've dug at least three dozen. At four dollars a dozen, hey, that's a, that's a better return than what I'm gonna get on making this video. So in the worm hole, we've got a penny, but it might be an old one. Let's find out. Canadian. Nope, I can see it, 86. All right, I've run out of time for today, guys, but uh, definitely this park might be worth coming back. That button has me intrigued. All right, new day, new park. This is one of the old ones that we've done 500 times, probably have 500 hours on this field, but we've got the legend, and there's a few places that are really dirty here with nails and stuff, and I think the legend's going to excel. So we're going to try that uh, just to, you know, see. I know there's 1880s stuff we have found here. So before turn of the century, can we get lucky today and pull a couple more things? 
I've got a few hours to kill. Let's find out. With over 500 hours on this field myself, guys, I know that uh, all the good signals are pretty much gone. So it's going to be something that's going to be a questionable signal uh, that may end up being a ring or a coin or something. It's not going to be a, woo, we missed this because we've just been over it so many times. That being said, I haven't been here yet this year. And every year when the spring frost comes up, it turns new things, pushes them to the surface. So I don't know if the other guys were here this year, Stan, John, I don't know, but let's give it a swing. I'm betting we're going to come out of here with probably, I'm going to say at least 15 pull tabs because that's all that's left are those 35 signal in that area. But guys, those signals can also be nickels or gold rings. So you never know. Well, there's the first four holes. An old nail, some brass wire, aluminum, and a dewworm. I don't know what he ate, but boy, was he giving off a good signal. Bummer. Here's part of the old 1880s schoolhouse that was here. Their wood stove. Cast iron. That's pretty cool. All right, I've been here almost an hour. And there is the first roundness in the hole. It's an, a penny, but it looks like it's going to be an old one. I've pulled a lot of them out of here from the 30s, 40s, or even before. Well, that's disappointing. It's not even as old as I was hoping. 1955. But it just goes to show there are still coins here. Few and far between, but they are here. Does anyone know what that is? It's got a scale on the bottom here. It starts with S. And then there's a whole bunch of little lines. And there's numbers. 4, 10, 4, 38. I have no idea. It's broken right there. But no idea what that is. Well, there's a live 22 round. I'll just break that apart and dump the powder out of it. That's old. Well, there's another brass casing, probably 1930s or 40s, due to the amount of green patina on there. All right, second coin of the day. Again, it's another copper. And I mean, I hope that it's older. It's thick, it's very green, and it came out of the hole with some brick from the original school, too. So, it, it could be older. Hey, 1547. Look at that. There's number four. Number eight. Twelve and a half. And number 20. Always satisfying to reach your goal that you set for the day. So if anyone had any doubts about the capabilities of the legend... Don't. I mean, this field has been beat to death. Literally, between Stan, John, and I, there's got to be seven, eight hundred hours on this field. And the legend is still pulling coins out of here. So, guys, for the price, there's no point in me upgrading. There is nothing out there that will beat the legend right now. We're sticking with the legend. And there, down there, probably 13 or 14 inches, pulled out an old square nail. That's from the original school as well. Well guys, I hate to call it on a pull tab now, but there's two guys behind me showed up with lawn tractors to do the field. So I guess we're done for today. It's gonna to be noisy, it's hot already, and we're not really finding anything, so we'll call it. I hate to call it on a pull tab, I really do.